Like actually yeah. 200 Yo, what is up guys, it's Josh back with another banger video on the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can actually put together your own Fortnite montage for beginners in DaVinci Resolve 17. Quick before I actually get into it though, I just want to say that over 70% of you guys who watch my videos are actually not subscribed to the channel yet, so make sure to drop a sub, it is 100% free for you guys to do, you can change your mind at a later date. With that being said, all the presets, downloads, and timestamps will be in the description if you want to check that out. Hope you guys do enjoy and this video helps you out, and I'll see you guys on my PC. Alright guys, so we just loaded up DaVinci Resolve, we entered a new project, and obviously when you first load up, and you might have a screen like this or this make sure you go on over to the edit tab that is the tab that we're going to be working with and also what we're going to do just go up to file right here in the top left to go down to project settings we're going to change our timeline frame rate to 60 fps and press save what that's going to do it'll make our playback a lot smoother as well as we'll be able to render out at 60 fps if you don't change it you will be stuck on like 24 or 30 fps so that's a little heads up for you guys make sure you are changing your frame rate before we start um, so what we're going to do right now is I'm just going to drag in two sample clips just from a little minute clip back I have right here. So we're just going to do that one and this one maybe just like that. And then we're also going to just get any song. If you guys don't know, you can use a YouTube to MP3 converter or another really good software that I do recommend is this thing called DMix. So you can just download that. I'll have a link to that in the description. What that does is you can just look up literally any song on the platform and you can download it. So for example, if I want to do something, I'm not logged into my account right now, but if we wanted to use a song like Get Fly by OGZ, it would just, you'd just look it up and you press the download button. It would download it on your PC. And obviously right here, I have all the different songs that I've downloaded through it. And it's the high quality version of each song. So just download something through there. And what we're going to do is I'm going to pick something from this folder. So let's do something like ends of the world or ends of the earth. Yeah, the ends of the earth is what it's called by a 637 Godwin, which is what I've downloaded through there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to drag it into the timeline, drag our song in. And what I do is I normally find the portion I want to use. Obviously, if it was a full montage, we'll be using the entire song, but I'm using a small portion right here. We're just going to find the main beat drop. So we can tell that's the beat drop right here. Where he says, I know she going to love me to the ends of the earth right here. This is where we want our first shot. So we're going to press M on our keyboard. That is the add marker button. We're going to find like a clap right after. We can hear like a little mini. I'll turn the volume up so you can guys can hear. You can hear there's a clap right there. So we're actually gonna click on this. We're gonna go to the marker thing right here. We're gonna change it to red. That's gonna be our transition marker. I'm gonna turn it back down again. And then this one, we're just gonna click it here. And then we're gonna change it back to blue. There's that second clap. And we'll add a red marker here and these are going to be our transition points just so kind of our montage flows with it because if you have good flow right away you're already making banger montages that's the number one important thing when it comes to editing but uh, obviously we trim it down like here i'll get rid of that at the very end but like we can see these blue markers are where we're going to want to hit our shots because those are the points of the song where you know we're getting beats that's where your viewers are anticipating shots because it will not be satisfying if you aren't landing your shots or editing your shots on the beats of the song so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our opener clip we're just gonna double click so we preview it in the window here we're gonna drag it along right here and we're just gonna select the portion we want to use by pressing these two arrows so we can see this little grayed portion right here is the part we're gonna be using and then we're gonna find the part where we get the kill where the siphon like first hits kind of thing kind of right here and we're gonna press this uh, little marker thing right here we're gonna press m or you can press the marker just i press m and we're going to drag it into the timeline we can see it's already placed a marker for us conveniently so we're going to line up our playback head which is what this red thing is called and we're just going to line that up with this marker we're going to extend it out to the beginning so it's the adjusted lengths so obviously it, it starts at the beginning of the song at the very beginning of the timeline and then it ends on our transition point which is what we're looking for and what we're going to do now is it might be a bit too advanced, but I just just trust me. If you have trouble, just go back, watch it again, go back, watch it again. Just follow along with me. Do your best. So right click on your clip, unlink it, click on the gray area to deselect, right click, go into retime controls. We can see there's a 100% thing with a black arrow. You're going to click on that black arrow with your left click, press add speed point. This is obviously on our kill. 
And then on your clip, whether it's like editing a wall or editing a ramp or full boxing someone, wherever there's a point where there's not movement. So we can see right here, it wouldn't be good because he's editing a, uh, editing a wall. We want to go to the point where he stops editing the wall and there isn't like a lot of like movement where he's like doing like a 360 or moving his crosshair a lot because it looks weird slow-mo. We're going to go to that point where it slows down because he's just jumping up. We're going to add another speed point. And then directly between these two, like right about here, we're gonna add another speed point. We're gonna change this first one by clicking on the arrow to 50%, change this one to 200%, and then we're gonna change this one to 50%. We're gonna bring our playback head to the marker, and then we're just going to adjust it so it looks like this with a bit of an overlap, and that is pretty much how you do that. So just like this. And that's literally the best velocity that you can do for beginners. Uh, what that does is it slows down our clip. The 200% makes it an acceleration into the kill, which has a slow-mo. And it's just, it adds a nice little touch to your clip itself with actually, without actually uh, adding effects. So that's probably one of the best things you could learn. Obviously, we're going to do the same thing with the second clip. So we're just going to do like this. Find the part we want to use just like this. And then drag that right there if you don't want to add the marker beforehand you don't really have to you just have to manually line it up so i'm just going to zoom in like that adjust it just like this that's synced up well that's good we're going to right click on link go to read time controls and i did it in the wrong way so go to read time controls I'm going to the wrong one. Read time controls. Sorry, I'm droning right now. Uh, make sure they're unlinked. Add speed point. Add speed point. Halfway between. Add speed point. 50%. 200%. And then lastly, 50%. Just like that. Line it up. Perfect. And then if you want, like, if you have, like, someone saying, like, 200 and you don't want it to cut off, you could extend the audio. Up to you, though. Uh, and then we're going to fade the clip out a bit because that's where our thing's going to go out. I'll fade out the audio as well. Fade that up, too. So just like that. And that is how we do that. Obviously, we got to add uh, effects now. We have our syncing velocity done. So we're just going to drag an adjustment clip from the effects tab. If you don't have this anywhere, just make sure you go up here, click effects tab. That'll pull it up. So you get effects, adjustment clip, slide this down so it lines up with the kill and then ends at the end of the clip. Go into the fusion tab. And I'm going to be showing how to do effects without plugins. So that way you're just able to uh, just, you know, make it without actually having to install any external plugins. You're going to look up camera shake, do this first one right here, drag it in and press shift on your keyboard at the same time. That way it highlights this. Or what you can do is you can just disconnect this line and connect it manually like this. But I feel like it works a lot better when you are doing like uh, it manually and just sh like dragging it with shift. But drag your X and Y deviation down to zero, change your rotation deviation to 0.45, change your randomness to 0.7, and then change your overall strength or your speed to 0.09. I believe that's the settings and change your edges to mirror. Yeah, that's the good tilt shake settings. And then you're just gonna keyframe the overall strength at the beginning at one, go to the very end, keyframe at zero. Yeah, just like that. And that's pretty much how you do a nice little tilt shake. What this is doing is we're keyframing it at the beginning. That means the strength of the settings. Obviously, if I remove these keyframes, like it's just an uncontrollable shake, like you can see. But if we keyframe the strength at one and keyframe the strength at zero right here, that means it's progressively going from one to zero. So it's obviously slowing down. So right here is about 0.5 strength. Obviously, it'll it ramps down. So this is like 0.9, this is 0 0.8, 0 0.6, or 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and so on. Um, you can see it slows down eventually. So that's kind of what we want, and uh, that's how keyframing works. Pretty much, you just add the little, press this little dot that adds a keyframe to that point, and then you just change it, and then it will kind of ramp down or ramp up depending on what you have the setting set to. And then we're gonna add a transform just right here, just like that do the exact same thing keyframe the size at 1.1 so it has it zoomed in at the very beginning go to the very end keyframe it at 1.0 so that has like a little bit of a screen pump it zooms out and then what we're also going to do is we're going to add 
another camera shake but this time we're going to mess around with the settings we're going to change the x deviation to zero rotation deviation to zero randomness to zero and then we're going to change the speed to let's do 0.2 um honestly that should be fine we're just going to keyframe the overall strength at one at the beginning we're going to go 10 frames after change it to zero yeah gives it a nice little extra movement so you can copy these settings if you want to pause it copy these settings right here you can that's the settings for the y shake this is the settings for the transform this is the settings for the tilt shake and then we're going to add a s on or not s underscore flicker it's a flicker addition just like this you see that's a bit of a flicker i'm going to change the range up to here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to settings make the range 0.3 Change the speed 1.2, just like that should be good. And then go into your settings, keyframe the blend at one, go to the very end, keyframe it at zero. Perfect. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add like a simple glow. So um, that's that, you change the glow size, make it wider, skinnier, I guess that may, if that makes sense. Um, and then you can also disable the, um, so if you wanted the glow to be higher, you can get rid of the color channels. So if you want it to be green, you just do that. Or you can like mix them together. I don't know, up to you. If you want like a blue one, or if you want like a pink one, that gets rid of the channels. It's kind of weird when you do that. Um, so I just re recommend doing like a clean little white one. So keyframe your glow at the beginning, like let's say 0.6 or something, and then go to the very end, keyframe net down to zero. And that is pretty much how to do a nice little impact. I mean, for beginners, that's that. You can go up here to timeline proxy mode, change it to quarter res. But it, it's obviously not black. You can see if I can change it back, it goes back to normal. It's just because it's kind of the quarter resolution messes with the scaling. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you end up making that. I'll uh, I'll end up I'll preset this just so you guys can have it. Let me quickly just save it to my desktop, and I will name it. Um, just free preset beginner impact. There we go. Perfect. Impact saved. And then for this, we could literally just copy it, or you could just literally just press Alt, drag it, and then just have it on this scale too. And if it's the same impact. Look at that. It's just super clean. That's pretty much how you do that. And uh, all we got to do now is do our transitions. So for this, the cool thing about DaVinci Resolve 17, they added a bunch of cool new um, movement transitions. So like a zoom in or out, you can literally just dra directly drag it in between the two clips, just like this. So just drags it on, or you can do like a zoom in and out, which kind of goes in and then out which is kind of a strange one. I don't know why you'd want to do that. And then we have different slide ones as well you could use. And, uh, but what I personally think is one of the best built-in DaVinci Resolve one is the non-additive dissolve. It's so clean. Like it mixes the two like video data together, which is super clean. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how you do that. If you guys have any questions, it's pretty much how you make your own basic Fortnite montage. Uh, presets will be in the description, like I said. Link to DaVinci will be in the description, as I said. And uh, if you guys want to drop a sub, I make a lot more advanced DaVinci Resolve tutorials. So if you get past this, you want to learn some more new stuff, check out all my old videos. I'll have a tutorials playlist linked in the description if you want to check out some of those new videos that I have with different impacts, syncing, all that stuff go check that out hope you guys did enjoy this little mini tutorial though on how you could actually edit like a beginner and i uh, hope you guys do enjoy like comment subscribe like i said and i will see you guys in a future upload on the channel peace out